Hey y'all, welcome back to our channel. Today we're gonna talk about romance because you know, we're romance writers and most of you are romance writers. And even if you're not totally a romance writer, there's a good chance that you're going to write a story somewhere down the road that has romance in it, whether it be a sci-fi, paranormal, a fantasy. So we're gonna give you the top 10 tips to writing romance. And remember while you're watching this video, if you like it, give it a thumbs up, make sure you hit subscribe and then hit the notification bell so you never miss a Friday upload. And hang on to the end of the video when we give you our number one bonus tip. You don't wanna miss this one. It's super important for writing romance. You gotta hear it. So hang on to the end and let's roll the credits. Starting with the number 10 tip for writing romance, plan your romance. I know we always talk about planning. At least we put it at the like back of the list this time so like we can get it out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> but it is important to plan so you know what's gonna happen with your characters. If you're gonna have like a love triangle, you need to plan out who's gonna like get bumped out of the triangle so it can just be like a line. You have to plan these things so even if um, you don't want to do like a really serious formal plan. You at least need to have like a plan in your head. Uh, I also think that that one's really important too because it's really easy to go on well, writing a romance and then you just end up like writing about like a series of dates and then makeout sessions and there's like no substance to the romance. Yeah. I don't really want to read about my romance that I had in real life. I want to read about this fantastical, out of this world, fictional romance. Goes along with this number nine is make sure you give your characters a backstory. This is really important, especially when we're dealing with kind of like the characters struggling with some internal conflict of why they should, why they shouldn't be a part of this relationship. That backstory usually plays into a romance very heavily. Mm -hmm. So you want to know what has been driving them and what that past trauma or maybe it was just like a bad relationship and they don't want to go through that again. What was that all about and how does that tie in to their internal conflict? Number eight is like really important. Make sure your love interest isn't problematic if you want them to be in game. Or you're gonna end up the subject of a lot of TikTok videos. Seriously, if you want your character to end up with, with another character, make sure that this character over here is a good person. I'm not saying that you, that we shouldn't like write about difficult things because difficult things do, should be written about and should be dealt with, but you don't write about those difficult things and expect your readers to love those characters when they never make those things right or never attempt to make them right or attempt to deal with them and they just get swept under the rug and love cures all. Not that. No, it doesn't. Number seven, everybody has their own comfortable place when it comes to spice. And we do think it's important that you figure out what you're going to be comfortable with. Are you a fade to black writer? Are you an explicit writer? Whatever it is, make sure that you understand what you're going to be getting yourself into and how you're going to promote the story. On top of that, you also want to make sure, unless you're writing an erotica, which is all about that fun time, the dancing as we like to call it here on our channel, you wanna space it out. It should have meaning every single time you have those steamy moments. There mm -hmm. should be something that is still driving the story, driving the relationship yeah. forward in the story. So uh, space them out. Wham, bam, thank you ma'am, all the time. Uh, it, it, then you just lose your plot. There's nothing wrong with being a fade to black writer. Um, there are several clean romance writers that we see on TikTok that do really well. Please do not market yourself to be um, a spicy romance writer if you're not, because you will get yourself a lot of hate. Make sure that you put it out there. You're a clean romance writer. And trust me, there are people out there who want that. There are people out there who aren't comfortable reading spice. Be honest about it when, when you're putting yourself out there. All right, number six. It's ironic that uh, I'm the one who gets to talk about this one. Okay, so there's like two um, camps on this, the, the protection aspect of um, romance. There's the, we need to address it because everybody needs to know that the characters are being safe and there's the, it ruins the moment. Why do we have to address it camp? And I kind of 
lean toward that one. I don't really feel like it always needs to be addressed. I think maybe we should just assume our characters are responsible adults and they're wearing a condom. I don't really know why we have to talk about it. I will say this. I think at some point during your story, you maybe should mention a birth control pill or an IUD or shots. Maybe mention that they are on birth control. Just throw that out there. There it is. And maybe the first time they sleep together, you might want to mention a condom, especially if they've never been together before, especially if they don't even know each other. Let me let me explain myself here because I feel like I get a lot of hate about this and I feel like people like look at me and they're like, oh my God, I can't believe you don't talk about it. <laughs> Here's my thing. If you don't address it at all, I assume they're wearing one. That's just me. That's just the way I am. But I've seen books where it's a one night stand and they don't even know each other, where they've literally said, you don't need to wear a condom. That does bother me because that is irresponsible. And there are people who are younger than us, who are not as wise as we are, who may read that and think, huh, that's okay to do. Huh, no, it's not okay to do. Because the character, you know, the male character says something like, well, I got a vasectomy, so it's all good. Pregnancy is not the only thing we're trying to rip it prevent here people because not every STD is curable. So can we not? Now a lot of people do smoothly work it in, work in a condom where it, it is still like part of it doesn't kill the mood and I am cool with that. I just think you need to work it in where it doesn't kill the mood. Number five, what's going to be the external conflict? If you're writing a pure romance book, yes the story is about them getting together and a lot of that has to do with all the internal stuff that it really becomes in the relationship, you know, the why we shouldn't, why we should kind of thing is more of the internal conflict. But there should still be something outside of them, forces outside of them, keeping them apart. And so you really mm -hmm. want to talk about some external conflict. Also, that can fall into some other kind of subplots that need to be um, addressed throughout the story. So, and that and having those subplots with other characters or whatnot, that adds a, a richness to your romance because it's not, it doesn't feel so single-minded and you're giving other aspects of your main character and whatnot. So really think about what your external conflict is and who it's going to be with and how it's going to be resolved. Number four, even more important than the external conflict for us is the internal conflict with romance and with everything, honestly. It's what the character is struggling with on the inside is really important too. It shouldn't be all happy, fuzzy, warm all the time. Like that is a big part of romance is the feeling, you know, the butterfly feeling, the oh, I'm so happy. This is a new relationship. Oh, everything is just like hunky dory. This is awesome. But it should not be like that all the time. Like that was the problem that we had with, one of the problems we had with Crown and Gilded Bones is there was no like, conflict between the, the two love interests like we need a little conflict here uh it's it's really important that um they be struggling with something it doesn't have to be like something huge necessarily but there needs to be something like some kind of internal like tug of war number three the butterfly inducing moments that we were just talking about they're important it's usually the moments too that end up kind of being your more quotable moments in a story where you know mm -hmm. you see everybody's putting it all over TikTok or it ends up on a t-shirt they really come from those butterfly inducing moments so make sure that you are not leaving them out there should be declarations of love there should be uh gentle ways there should be smoldering looks all of these things add in to not only giving your main character butterflies but hopefully your readers as well mm -hmm. number two is one of our favorite things to say if you want to write a bad boy that's great bad boys are huge they always will be but make sure he's redeemable because an asshole is an asshole period like that's not gonna change so and number one and we will tell you we get told this all the time people get very excited in books when they see out and out consent consent is sexy make sure that your characters are having conversations uh do you want me to is this okay Mm -hmm. Those can be very sexy moments in a romance and you should you should take that and run with it. And as promised, the bonus tip, you as the writer should write what you think is romantic. And that sounds like 
kind of silly and simple, but guess what? What you find to be romantic is probably what a lot of other people find to be romantic too. You do what you would like to see or what you would like to experience, then I guarantee you, other people enjoy it too. So there you have it. There's our top 10 tips for writing romance. Go forth, write a great romance, make sure it's swoon worthy. We would, we love a good swoon worthy romance. And if you want to read some swoon worthy romances, you can visit our Wattpad at Crystal and Felicity. And as always, make sure you're writing what you love.